Hi guys, it's Martin Pickering here and today we're going to be having a look at the Powerbox Systems Lightbox Unit. So what is the Lightbox? This is actually what it says on the tin. It controls the lights on our model. Whether we have some lights on our wingtips or we have a completely scale model which has to replicate in every detail the full size. This is what we're going to use for the lights. Inside the packing we have the manual, which hopefully we won't be needing by the time we finish with this video. Some wires, which we can use to plug in the LEDs or make up our own, whatever we want. A nice little sticker, and of course, the actual box itself. The box itself is the same size and shape as the well-known Powerbox Systems spark switch. It works in a very similar way as well. The receiver signal uh, and the controlling point, therefore, uh, or switching over the lights comes in at one end and the LEDs come out at the other. It has four sockets for the LEDs. Each one of those can be programmed individually however we want. So the lights can simply come on and stay on, flash, beacon, strobe or even have an afterburner. If you have more than four LEDs, as will most likely be the case, simply gang these together on the effect that you want. Uh, so you can have four completely separate effects on the model, even though you can have many more LEDs uh, actually working on it. The power is taken from the receiver, uh, or depending on how you have it plugged in, to the receiver or to the power box, at the 5.9 or 7.4 volts that that is set to. However, if you want to use a separate LiPo uh, to have a completely separate system, uh, you can do that as well. Simply plug in the external battery uh, be it one cell, two cell or three cell and automatically it will detect that there's an extra battery connected and it will only take power from that. It also has a USB socket uh, where you can plug in the uh, USB dongle or the Bluecom adapter so you can do it from your phone or tablet. Okay so here we have our light box installed as we would have it in our model. Battery to receiver receiver to light box and light box to LEDs. In my case because the LEDs are 12 volt I'm going to be running an external battery uh, to power them, specifically a three cell LiPo. We've also connected the Bluecom so we can program what each one of the four LEDs is going to do. So first of all let's power the system on, just turn the receiver on And straight out of the box, the LEDs have some pre-assigned functions on them. The receiver channel that I plug them into is the throttle. So as you can see, I can turn them off with the throttle and then back on again. Or depending on where we have the settings in the program, we'll be able to turn them on at different positions of the throttle stick. So let's just turn those off for the moment. We go to our mobile terminal app, search for Lightbox, and quick connect. Okay, I'm just going to cover up the second, third, and fourth LEDs so we can focus on the first one, which is connected to output number one. Now, once we open the Powerbox program, the first page shows us the signal type. PWM is when we connect the receiver to the light box with a single patch lead, basically taking up a channel. Normally that's how it will always be connected, however, if you decide to connect it via a bus system, you can also simply select which bus system you're using and it will take the signal from there. Below it we have the cutoff voltage which will set at what voltage we want the light box to turn off to avoid over discharging our batteries. On the second page uh, we have output number one. Here we can see that we can change the on off set point. What that means is the position in which the LED will turn on or off at. So within the throw that we have on our radio Rather than it having 
the, the only option to be on or off in the centre, we can have it come on earlier or later. That allows us to play in such a way that if we want to have different light settings, say two or three different settings, one for landing, one for takeoff and one for flying, we can do that by simply by playing with the on off set point. We put that back to the center for simplicity for now. Uh, we can see that the function that we currently have set for that LED is a solid light. In other words, it will come on when we go past that halfway point and it will turn off when we go past the halfway point in the other direction. That is currently the case. If we change it to flashlight, it flashes as you would expect. And here we now have some options. We can actually change how long we want it to be off for in between flashes and how long we want it to be on for whilst it's flashing. So anything that we want to pretty much. We also have a double flash where it flashes twice. And again, in the settings, we can change how long we want it to be on for, for each one of those flashes, and how long we want it to be in between each of those flashes. So again, we just change that slightly. We can immediately see the change. We can have it as a beacon where it simulates a light going round. And we can change the speed at which that beacon is supposedly spinning at. So if we slow that down, you can see a lot easier what that simulates. And we can really slow that down if need be. And finally, we also have the afterburner option, where it, when we change from on to off position, it will have that wonderful effect of an afterburner. As you can see, all these changes that we're making in the program instantly take place in the uh, light box itself, and no further saving or changes are necessary. Once you've finished, just go back or swap over onto the next output that you want to modify. All four outputs have exactly the same screens, so just modify accordingly to whatever you need.